Hello and welcome to another episode of Brewery Towns, the podcast that talks about brewing beer throughout the country. In this episode, Cecilia and I head down to the resort town of Galveston, Texas. We'll talk about its founding, we'll talk about the role that the brewery played in after a very devastating natural disaster, and we'll talk about the modern beer that is being brewed on the island now. This was an early episode that we recorded, so the sound quality is still not great. We're still working on it, uh, but we think that these stories are really should be told and that you guys are really going to like them. As always, follow us on Facebook and Instagram to know when our latest episodes are coming out. And now, another episode of Brewery Towns. episode of Brewery Towns, everyone, the podcast that talks about brewing history throughout the country. Now, today we are going down to Galveston, Texas, and before we get started, I just want to thank the Houston Chronicle and the Rosenberg Library and Museum. They were my sources for this episode, and everything was free, and right now that's really good for me. So thank you for having your information online and for everyone to be able to access it. And I am joined this episode by my friend Cecilia. Hey guys, I'm excited to be here. And Cecilia is actually from the Houston area, born and raised, right? Born and raised, born and raised, born and raised yes. With a Mexican heritage. You're with not, a Mexican heritage. You're not heritage. from Mexico. No, okay. no, no. I was born here. Okay, perfect. Perfect. So she's going to give a little bit of insight to maybe some of the history that we're going to be talking about. Maybe. Yeah, not know. to put you on I don't know. I'm yeah. not, don't, don't do that. <laughs> she may or may not. Okay, current population. Galveston, you know, it's a resort town, so we think of it with all the tourists there, you know, we think of it as a pretty popular island, but it's pretty small, only about 50,000 people call it home, and we'll talk about that number has actually decreased in recent years because some of the events that have gone on down there. Uh, its nickname is the Oleander City. I think Oleander. That, do, you, do you know what that is? No, but it sounds cute and I like it. Yeah, but. I, I could be saying it wrong. Ole, Oleander? I think oleander. I, th- I like oleander. Oleander. Let's okay. go for that. Let's so, so it's a it's a type of flower. Oh, okay. And so the the city is named the Oleander City because over 100 types of oleander species <gasps> live or th- thrive. Oh, right, right. They don't. Li- I mean, I guess they live. <laughs> Equality. They they thrive on the island. Oh, have you seen this flower? No. Hmm. So if you showed me a flower, and then you showed I, me. I wouldn't know. I don't know yeah. many flowers. To be honest <laughs> I don't with either. You. But but. They, people could show you a hundred different flowers, and they could all be oleander. Hmm. So they sound like cute flowers. I, I, I imagine like something like purple, like a lilac. Mm-hmm. I'm imagining like a yellow sunflower. Oh, Do really? Those exist? <laughs> yeah, I, maybe not in Galveston, but I, I, that's what I I'm picturing. But okay, whatever. We'll we'll look it up yeah. when we're done. We probably should have done that beforehand, mm-hmm. but it's okay. okay. Uh, last thing before we get into it, hometown, hometown of Tina Knowles. Is Knowles, it, a, it sounds familiar. Um, Beyonce? Beyonce, yeah. I, th- okay. I think a lot of people, if you say Knowles, you probably wouldn't think of Beyonce. We just know her for her first her, name, and, yeah. you know, that's all you need. That's all you, yeah, that's all you need for so, me. But she is Beyonce's mom. Beyonce is from Houston, and right. Tina is from Galveston. I think she was born and raised there. Okay. But it's just interesting that she, Beyonce's mom is from Galveston. Yeah. But that is the most prominent person that I could find that was that was born there. Okay. I think, we, you know, the smaller towns, you know, there's less people to, ch- to choose from, but I thought that was a pretty that good one. That is a pretty good one. Yeah. So founding, it, it's a relatively new city. It was just founded in 1838, and it's named after the Spanish, Spanish, <laughs> this count from Spain, <laughs> Fernando de Galvez. Fernando de Galvez. Fernando, yeah, can you say that? Yeah. Yeah. It's right there on that top line. Fernando de Galvez. <sighs> Perfect. And so there is this supposedly haunted hotel down there called Hotel Galvez. I think so. And I wonder if it's called after it's named after him. Yeah, well, you know, everything, is you know, named. it's just a big circle. Mm-hmm. I know, I've been, it's it's the one down it's, on the beach. Yeah. Like, it, by itself, it's, like, really creepy, isn't it? Is that the one? It, I mean, it... Or is it the one downtown? No, no, it's in down. It's, it's in Galveston. on the beach. Yeah, on yeah. the beach, yeah. Oh, I know. Every, every haunted place that is going to be associated with these breweries we're going to talk about. Okay. Oh, I love, love ghosts. Me too. Mm. Okay, so it was founded in 1838, named after this, this count, and the first people besides for the indigenous people mm. who, I, I, I guess the Karankawa were I guess. down there. I know they were in Houston. Yeah. I, 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 I would know. assume so. Yeah. But the first, uh, I guess, white settlers... Mm-hmm. Was, were, were pirates. Yeah, first Europeans were, were pirates. Louis Michel. Michel. Louis Michel? Michel? Yeah, I, sure. I don't know well, how to... Let's go with that. He was, he was French, obviously. I, 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 
pretty sure he was from New Orleans. Okay. And then he came down to Galveston because no one was on the island, so he made that home base just to kind of stay away from people he didn't like, his enemies. Oh, right. And he, he fought Spain on Mexico's behalf, so there's actually a, a long history of conflicts going down there, even before, you know, Texas was part of the country. Uh, another instance is Galveston was the main port for the Texas Navy during the Texas Revolution in 1836. Oh, interesting. And yeah. during the Civil War, you know, you, there was the Battle of Galveston, you know, right. Union so soldiers versus Confederates. Oh, you don't think about all that history in no. just such a small island. Yeah, well, and you don't think of the Civil War getting down to Texas. Yeah, you, you know, you think of it ending maybe like Tennessee and Virginia. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a, a big battle happened right off the coast. And then after that, the city really started to flourish when Texas became its own country for a little bit, and then it joined the, the United States. So Galveston had the first post office, cotton compress, Catholic school, gaslight, orphanage, hospital, opera house, and telephone lines in Texas. Wow. Yeah. That's insane. It is, because if you think about San Antonio, those missions. Right. I mean, the Alamo, a... yeah. I mean, they are, they are so old. And, and just the other big cities, like, I mean, El Paso, Dallas, for a while. Fort Worth, yeah, Austin. Yeah. So uh, th this was really the place to be. And if you think about it, you know, if you're if you're coming to Texas, right. if you're coming on a boat, you're going to hit Galveston first, right. and you're probably just going to stay there. Right, exactly. So pre-Prohibition, um, the way to get beer was that it was shipped down from St. Louis, from the breweries up there, down the mighty Mississippi, and then along the, the Texas Gulf Coast. Okay. Uh, which, which took a little bit. Right. It took probably about a few weeks to get down here. And just, it could barely beat, meet demand. And so they tried to get some local beer. I don't know what breweries were, were around at that time, but they tried to get local beer from the mainland. Mm -hmm. uh, but unfortunately, the only way to get into the city was on unpaid roads. Mm -hmm. And this beer would be in the back of carriages that were being pulled by horses. Oh, my God. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Oh. And now we just have Amazon Prime. It's just yeah, like, oh, yeah, here yeah. the next day. Yeah, and, and you can uh, imagine, you know, it's pretty hot. It's still right. pretty hot here. Yeah. It was probably hotter back then. Swampy areas. Swampy oh. area. And, and you think ice... You know, ice factories weren't really around yeah, aren't. until a little bit later. Yeah. I mean, after the Civil War, they started to get new technology, but it, it took a little bit to spread around the right. country. Um, so three, uh, three people, this trio, tried to start brainstorming how to bring a brewery down to the island. Mm. And this included Adolphus Bush of the Bush family. Oh, okay. You know, Bush Beard's still, still around. When you think about it, you're like, wow, your, your family extends all the way back. I know. It's insane. And you know what they were doing, too. Right, like it's exactly. documented, yeah. Uh, William Lemp, which who owned the Lemp Brewery in St. Louis, and it was actually one of the bigger ones until they hit some hard times during Prohibition. And uh, apparently, the Lemp Mansion, which was on the grounds of the brewery, is pretty haunted too. Really? Yeah. Mm. Because well, that, time that, to go to. <laughs> because that family was just plagued by just like I guess mental disease, oh, and God. so there were a lot of deaths oh. in the house. And I think it's still a, a B and B that you can stay in. It's still it's oh. still up. Um, but he was one of the people. We'll we'll get back to that. I'm that sure. would in definitely a, be a place I would go. Yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about yeah. that in a later episode. I mean, St. Louis is just a mecca for beer, right. so we might have to do a, a, a couple part a series. Yeah, I think so. On that, so we so they had two beer barons from St. Louis, and then they had a local man, Bertrand Adu. Cool last name. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's probably not how you say it. Probably not. It's okay. Yeah. But Bertrand helped these guys raise over four hundred thousand dollars, which in today's money translates to about eleven million. And so a lot of cash, a lot of money. Yeah, it brought in a lot of money. Bush was inventing or investing in Texas. He invested about three million. You know, he was bringing um, factories down here too because they had to pay for the shipping all the way from St. Louis to the South. So why not just put a couple factories in right. the South? And, you know, it'll cost you money up front, but in the end, it'll save you. Right, right, right. So they got the money, but they still had two obstacles to building the first brewery on the island. One was a lack of purified water. You know, the water was just coming from pipes from the mainland. Right. And they were, there was just not enough coming. You know, it takes such a massive amount of water to brew beer. It does, and, yeah. You know, they needed to build more pipes, even build maybe a water station on the island. Mm -hmm. So that was an obstacle. But then another one was low-lying land. Uh, so if they were going to build this concrete building, it was gonna, the weight of it was going to sink down right. into the right. island. Just because, you know, it was going to be one of the biggest buildings that, that they built. I wonder if Galveston still has that issue where it's just so low. I know yeah. Galveston's pretty... Well, if you think about it, there's not many, like, tall buildings there is down a, there. Yeah. So, but. But, like, the Hotel Gal Galvez is, like, Massive. at least 12 stories. Yeah. So, yeah. 
I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know. But but maybe they do what what these guys did with the brewery. They brought in dirt and silt, and they just built like t- a ten foot foundation right. so the brewery could sit on that. And Which I guess if smart. it's I guess if it's if it sank, they thought it would sink no more than ten feet. Right. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's pretty dramatic sinking. But they did that. They got more water down there. They got the money, and they built the brewery. Nice. Okay. So the first brewery on the island was founded in 1898. They called it Galveston Brewing Company, mm. named after the island. Bertrand was the owner, and he was pretty prominent in Texas because he created the Texas Brewers Association. Okay. And then he he gained prominence around the country because in Galveston, he reformed some of these illegal practices that saloons were doing. Oh, I see. So they were allowing minors in. Oh, no. They were serving on Sunday before a specified time, which right. you still can't do if yeah, you're in you Texas. Yeah, you can do, yeah. Uh, they were opening early. They were staying open later. And in other cities, mm-hmm. uh, the feds came in, and they just shut the entire city down. They just made it dry. Wow. Okay. So he owned this, this brewery, and he saw these people doing it. They, they were going to screw him over. Right. So he reformed. Um, they were becoming a little bit cleaner. Okay. At, at least enough so people wouldn't come down and shut them down. I see. Uh, but what he did, other cities started to take that lead, too. Okay. Uh, so he was a pretty important guy, just yeah. just in the history of Galveston and Texas. So Galveston Brewing Company, their main product was called High Grade, and their tagline was, not enough to hurt anyone. Mm, I wonder what that means. Yeah, mm-hmm. not enough. Like, enough of what? Enough alcohol? Yeah, not enough know. alcohol to hurt anyone. How do they... I don't know. Is there... What, 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 I mean, if you what saw you, that, what would you think? Like, I mean... Not enough alcohol to hurt anyone. What? What is? What is it gonna? Is it gonna like give you like liver? Right. I, or like, I don't know. are you gonna like get drunk and hurt somebody? Right. I, mm, interesting. So I like it. Yeah. I, yeah. It makes you think. So things were going good the first couple of years, but then in September of 1900, the great storm of Galveston came through. It was oh, yeah. a massive hurricane, Category Five, came in from the Gulf of Mexico. So you know, not many people outside of Texas know of this event and they should because it it was the deadliest natural disaster in u.s history and it still is you know six to twelve thousand people they estimate estimated died wow that's a, i mean if you go to twelve thousand that's almost half the island right and all of the buildings were either damaged in some way or completely destroyed like if you look at pictures online there's just wood everywhere it just looks like a, a lumber yard that right. just got washed away and like the train tracks were were thrown off the trains couldn't get down there so the island the people didn't know that this was coming just because right. you know the radar was not was not a thing back then. Yeah. and they couldn't get help because people couldn't even get down there for a few days to help them right. uh, so they really had to rely on the community you know what was left of it to to help out everyone and the brewery played a, a big part in this they provided water oh. to a lot of the survivors uh, but they also had a, a large amount of ice, and they that was for keeping the beer mm-hmm. cold, obviously. But they used that for keeping the corpses cold. So wow. once people could get down, they could identify the bodies. That's so nice of them. Like yeah. you don't really, you don't think that a brewery would do that? Would be like that safe haven for the community itself to come yeah. together? And yet, yeah, it's what happened. But you know, it, it was intact because it was concrete, concrete building and it was built ten feet, you know, up right. above sea level. So I mean, just those decisions ended up really impacting. The architects or the engineers that I know. thought of that. It's I like, know. okay, thank God for them. So they, you know, they probably took a hit during this, mm-hmm. but they continued brewing and Galveston survived and it was thriving again. And in 1907, a man named Herman Weiss came from San Antonio. Okay. And he was working at a brewery here, but he came to Galveston to open his own brewery, which happened um, in 1907. But then less than two years later, he closed because then he moved to a city east called Shiner, Texas. Oh, Shiner, yes. Yeah, a lot of people might recognize Shiner beer. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's shipped all over the, the country. Um, but it's actually from a brewery called Spotsol. And Spotsol opened, and they needed a head brewmaster for their Lenten beer, which was brewed in the springtime. Right. Um, Lenten beer, there's a whole history behind it, which is pretty cool. We won't get into it today. But Herman Weiss, he went out there, and he became one of the first brewmasters at Shiner. Right. Or at Spotsol and Shiner. So his career was basically making beer. Yeah. Which is... Pretty, pretty cool, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So he, I mean, he moved his family all over just to make it's beer. Like, all right, let's like go now. Dream. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then he closed. So really, Galveston Brewing Company was the only early brewery here that that survived more than a couple years. There's some instances of some other people brewing, but mm-hmm. there's really no information about that. Um, so when Prohibition hit, 
uh, Galveston was became known as Sin City of the South. Sin City of the South. And I you like can that. imagine why. You know? Right. And they had a lot of alcohol. So they had a lot of um, liquor consumption, a lot of prostitution, a lot of gambling, just mm-hmm. all the vices oh, you would yeah. think of. And the locals actually gave the city a couple nicknames, too. They called it the Free State of Galveston, mm. and they called it the Republic of Galveston Island. Two really cool names, yeah. I have to admit. Like, it's almost like they were... they were uh, Bringing them in by yeah. these... Like, and they were saying, like, see ya, United States. Right. Like, we're not going to follow your rules. <laughs> and, like, you know, it's not like the feds could surprise them, because, you know, you can see if someone's going to come in from the island, unless right. they're coming by boat. Right. You, well, you know, there weren't that many roads boat. coming down yeah. there, so... And they you know they probably were gonna got come, it. Yeah, they weren't going to come by boat yeah, in no. that period. No. Like, come on. So they were probably just doing, doing whatever they wanted to, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. And so at that time, Galveston Brewing obviously had to stop brewing beer, but they created this non-alcoholic beverage called Galvo. And so Galvo was advertised as a non-intoxicating cereal beverage. Mm. Yeah. So interesting name. Yes. Cereal beverage. Cereal. Mm. I, I think of milk. Right. When you think of cereal beverage, but. There's also like these like breakfasty stouts that kind of taste like breakfast. Oh, you know, I so maybe th- maybe that was what they were going with cereal beverage without alcohol, like a very maybe. thick um, stout. Perhaps. But I, I don't I don't know if they would make a stout in Texas, you know, in 1920. You, you know, never it know. Just, if it's not cold, you don't want to drink a stout. Like, right. So huh. I would. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'd like to know if anyone knows. Though. Let us know. Yeah. So Galveston Brewing um, eventually sold out to Southern Beverage, which bought them in 1927. And then they changed their name to Triple X Company. Wow. Which is like, <laughs> sounds yeah, it's something, naughty. something you would see a lot of truckers at, I feel like. Triple X <laughs> Company. Uh, but I guess it worked. Their main product was Triple X Root Beer. And, and, okay. and, and they produced the, these beverages until the end of Prohibition. So they did pretty well for themselves. Yeah. Okay. And mm-hmm. there's a lot of bottles left that people have discovered. It's like Triple X. It's, it's kind of a cool logo. Okay. It's kind of like the movie Triple X, like the, right. the three X's inside a circle. But then once Prohibition was lifted, the Galveston Houston Brewery set up shop in Galveston. Obviously, from the name, you would think their other location was in Houston. Right. And that is correct. The executive of the Galveston Houston Breweries. Uh, was also um, the executive of the Houston Ice and Brewing Company. Mm, okay. So that these were, I, I think they were more like sister companies. Sister companies. Uh, but they just used the old Galvis, Galveston Brewing facility. It was still standing. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously, if it's going to stand after that great storm, it's, it's going to be knocked right. down by anything else. Um, their main product was Magnolia Beer and the Southern Select Label. Uh, the Southern Select Label was actually the third most popular in Texas. Okay. It was behind Grand prize of the Gulf Brewing Company, which was located uh, a few miles up in Houston, and then uh, behind Pearl of the San Antonio Brewing Association. Oh. And you can still get Pearl. Oh, can you? Today. Yeah. Oh. It, it's still, and I, I think the last time I went to San Antonio, some of their brewery is still up on the banks of one of the rivers there. Oh. So that would be a fun, yeah, fun city would, to do. Uh, yeah, I think so. So they were they were doing okay in the 1930s and 40s, but then once we get to the 1950s, these big beer conglomerates started just to Dominate. gobble up these little local yeah. places. And that happened in Galveston in 1954. Fall Staff Brewing Corporation bought the the Galveston Houston Company. Mm-hmm. Now they uh, they were a big brewery. They were based in St. Louis, and they actually had some lines um, in the Lemp Brewery history. Uh, if you remember, William Lemp was one of the, yeah. the trio that tried to get beer down to Galveston, so that's a fun little tie-in. Yeah. Um, but they had plants in St. Louis, and but then in Nebraska, Indiana, Louisiana, Texas. They actually had two wow. here. Yeah, one was in Galveston and one was in El Paso. Oh, So not, not even close yeah. to each other, but still both in the state of Texas. And they were doing okay, but they started to, to falter as well. Even though they were bigger, they still couldn't keep up with the larger breweries at the time. You know, during the 1980s, this is when breweries started to use marketing. Right. And they were they were just using so much money on marketing that the other breweries did not even have that much money in their overall budget. They couldn't keep up. Yep. Yeah. So Falstaff closed uh, in 1981. The Galveston property was actually one of their last ones to close. Oh. I, I don't see. know why. Hmm. But that one closed in 1981, and the company closed a little bit later. They actually sold sold their, their brand to someone else, so it kept on going. Uh, but now I think it's defunct now. So in 1981, no more local beer in Galveston, and it stayed that way for another three decades. That's crazy. I know. Oh. 
but I mean, it's like that. Once we do, uh, once we have more episodes, you're, you're going to see, see it's, it's the pattern. Yeah. yeah. Uh, luckily, brewing started up pretty early again in Galveston in 2011. This bar brewery combo called Brews Brothers, mm-hmm. which I, I like, I like, like Brews Brothers, Brews Brothers, and it was started by uh, a trio as well. And they were located in one of the uh, Prohibition era buildings on on the Strand, I see. which the Strand was the old business district that then became that, that party central during Prohibition. Oh, okay, okay. So they were located in one of those old saloons that oh, was, were doing. That's kind of cool. That's yeah. a cool history that yeah. you can kind of. So, so I, I, I don't, we've been down there a couple times now yeah. to Galveston, but mm-hmm. I, I don't think we ever went to we to Brews Brothers. Or at least I haven't. Yeah, no. but they're. It, you know, even though they were founded in 2011, mm-hmm. it was hard to find information on them because they brewed such small batches. Yeah. But the one that I could find information on was called 1900 Great Stout, and it was aged in barrels from trees that were planted after the Great Storm of 1900 because oh, that probably insane. wiped away yeah. just a lot of the vegetation. But then those same trees were uprooted by another hurricane called Hurricane Ike, which I think was the big one here in Houston. It, it flooded a lot of the... The Houston area, right? It hit certain areas yeah. pretty hard, and other areas didn't get hit at all. So. Yeah. So that was, um, what, 2009, 2010? Some, something like that, yeah. yeah. I remember one of my friends saying that, that they lost power for a, a week or something. And so, you know, where yeah. I lived, it, we did not get hit. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's interesting. When these storms come right. to Houston, it's just pockets. Yeah. But she was saying they lost power, so she just sat on her roof for like a week oh. playing guitar because she couldn't like, text her boyfriend. <laughs> so I, I just make fun of her for that for... Well, I still make know, fun of her sitting on your roof playing guitar. I mean, it sounds, it, it very, sounds it's like, relaxing. It's what people choose to do right. these days. So she was just ahead of the game. Yeah, exactly. Um, but Brews Brothers, they don't brew anymore. I, I couldn't find an exact year that they stopped, but mm-hmm. there's just not much information about the beer that they brew. Uh, but now you can still go there. It's, it's just a bar, and, and they are known for one of the best tap lists in the oh, city of Galveston. Okay. Uh, net, the year after they were founded, in 2012, another brewery came to the island, and this one was called Beerfoot, and it was located just like right off the beach in an old nightclub. Okay, yes. And this was founded by a man called Mark Del Oso, and he was a tub, tugboat captain for the new uh, Blue Railroad Bridge that was being built that was connecting the mainland to Galveston. Oh, okay. okay. And if any, yeah. the, the, there's only one, 45. That's the only road right. that goes down to Galveston, and if you guys go down there from Houston, you can see... The Blue Bridge, I think it's going to be on your left. Yeah. And he I was helping so. build that, and he was bringing supplies from the island to the, the workers out there. But then after hours, he was also bringing them home beer. Mm. He was a home brewer, so he was making beer, and he was giving it to these guys while they were just hanging out and partying, and they were like, this is really good. So eventually he founded this place called Beerfoot Brewery. Kind of like, not Barefoot, but it's, I want to say Barefoot every time. I know, I know. Because it's the wine, and everyone knows, <laughs> but Beerfoot. I like and, the name, though. Yeah, I like the name, too. And, and their thing, their logo is just like a foot, I believe. Right. I think right. so, too. Yeah. yeah. And so he, it was a small system. I think just like two barrels in the back. Okay. And he invited, he made it his own, he made his own beer, but he also invited home brewers to make public batches so they I could see. get feedback, not just from their friends and family, from, but from, from the public the, yeah. on if their product is any good. That's smart. Yeah. So he left that, that foundation in 2012 to start another brewery called the Galveston Island Brewing Company. Mm-hmm. And this was founded in 2013 by Mark. And it, it's a little bit down from where the Strand is, from where the pier is. Right. It's kind of like a more like residential area. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's really cool. The, the tap room has like big garage doors and it has like this whole outside area where the kids and the dogs can play. Oh, and nice. It has like, yeah, mm-hmm. it's kind of like, like this mini amphitheater kind of thing, which is cool. Uh, but they have... They, they now have some pretty uh, standard beers. Uh, one is Tiki Wheat. It got a 3.66 on Untap, okay, which, so which is pretty good. Yeah, that's good. A Flip Flop Pale Lager, 3.56, easy drinking. And then Blue Bridge Amber, which is in, in reference to mm-hmm. really where he got his start, and that got a 3.57. So those are just a couple of their flagship beers. They're all beachy. Well, beach theme. Yeah, yeah, it's a very beachy place. Mm-hmm. And, and these guys are probably the most widely distributed i'm pretty sure you can get them throughout texas and oh, okay. their cans are very beachy too sunset water like, oh. it just makes you know, like when you go down to the beach you want to drink this beer. right right because exactly. e- all these are easy drinking you can knock a six pack back and not be like hammered if they're not ipas or anything you can still enjoy the beach yeah still without you know being, drowning yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
So 2012, Beerfoot, 2013, Galveston Island. Beerfoot continued even though Mark left. So those were the two ones that continued until 2018 when uh, this new place called Devil in the Deep Brewing opened. Ooh, I like that name. And this was opened by a veteran um, from Arizona who actually moved to, moved back to Galveston. And he started to homebrew and had um, Mark Del Oso as his mentor. Wow, so this guy is just... This guy's at the top yeah. of the tree and now you're, you're starting to see the branches come down mm. from him. So who knows if this guy didn't start doing this, you know. What would who happen, knows? yeah. So this, this location is in a defunct bar... It's like kind of by the strand, but on the mm-hmm. other side from where Brews Brothers is. So right. it's a little bit of a walk. Uh, but it's cool that these places are making use of these buildings that are already around. Right. I um, like that. I like when they reuse mm-hmm. old buildings. It gives mm-hmm. it gives a character, I, I feel. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. And so this, uh, I, you, have you been here? I don't think we, um, we went when we went Not to that down. one, no. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's like a shell. I think they just probably gutted that old bar and they just have picnic tables and they have big garage doors that leads out to like a little grassy area yeah, and you can bring good. dogs inside mm-hmm. and um you know they, they don't brew that much beer but it's just like a, a, a nice little place okay uh, one beer they do brew is in reference to the island's maritime history oh. uh they actually brought this scottish sailing ship called the Alyssa oh, to galveston okay. it's not moored there permanently mm-hmm. but they they still sail it sail it out um, but there's a maritime museum connected to it, like very big maritime history, because a lot of the the immigrants that came to Texas came through Galveston Island. It was, right. it was almost like the Ellis Island. A lot of people forget it, about that. Yeah, it was like the <laughs> Ellis Island of the South. Yeah. And that museum just tries to capture that history. But right behind the Alyssa, you know, is a cruise ship terminal. Right. And they actually use part of the old um, Galveston Brewing building, you know, mm-hmm. the, the big concrete building. Yeah. They actually use some of that for parking now. Oh, I for the that. cruise ship. Um, okay people that are going to go on their cruise ships and they live their car there and there's actually plans to build like a bar and like a hotel within that complex and to use some of that original building Mm. Uh, but that has not happened yet but anyway back to devil in the deep it's a it's a pretty cool name do you Mm -hmm. know where that i don't know i know it's cool name that's all i know and their logo is like a pyramid with an eye too oh wow it's like yeah it's really cool but the the name comes from a, a saying that's sort of means the same thing as between a rock and a hard place Oh, that's so. It's that's like, are you dark. gonna choose the devil? Or are you gonna choose like the deep? I assume it's like a sailor, like right. Davy Jones's locker. Like you're right. gonna go, you're gonna pray to the devil, or mm-hmm. you're gonna go to the deep. Like there's mm. no good. You're stuck in between. Stuck in between. No good. Might answer. as well have a beer. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess that's what they're going for because <laughs> it's kind of a, a weird name for a business. Yeah. So they were around, and then the following year in 2019, another brewery opened called Symposium Brew Pub. Oh yes. It I'm was sure. just opened by a couple. Uh, we went down to, to Galveston, I guess it was last summer. Yeah. Now, we went to Beerfoot. Mm-hmm. We went to see a couple of the museums and a couple of the historic ships that are down there. The Alyssa was one of them. The Alyssa. Mm-hmm. And then we went to this place called Symposium. Mm-hmm. And so it was founded by this couple, and it was supposed to be a place for conversation, a place for meetings. Right. You know, it, just casual gatherings, which, which is nice. you know, goes back to the symposium yeah. name. Yeah, it, it is nice. Yeah. Um, the place was was a, a little underwhelming. I think they were still yeah. working on it when I we went. They were still yeah. pretty, because we went down, like, they were probably only open for a month. Mm-hmm. I think and, so. And so when we went down there, um, we sat at the bar and we got to talk to one of the brewers, I guess. Mm-hmm. And so because, you know, anytime a brewery opens, people want to go down and they want to get that beer and they just sell out right away. Right. So that's what happened to these guys. And they sold out of all the beer that they brewed. The problem was the brew, one of the brewers broke his arm. Oh, gosh. And you can't that's brew right. with one arm. Right. So when we went down there, we couldn't get any of the beer that they brewed because it was all out. And they just had just other breweries on tap. Right. Um, but I wish they had one of their beers, the Benny... Vidi Vici. Is that how you say it? Benny Vidi Vici? Benny Vidi Vici. Sounds like what it, is yes. that, What does that mean? Like Benny... conquer? Like, it like they came, they saw, they conquered? I think so. Uh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Benny, <laughs> Benny Vidi Vici Golden Ale. Ale. It got a 4.15 on tap, which is pretty good. Um, but I think because of their location, there were a lot of videos, especially during the summer, during hurricane season, that the street in front of them flooded. I think they maybe got some yeah. water, 
in, in, in their property as well. They might have. I don't know. So I think that mix with the brewer breaking his, his arm, arm was just like, it's just, oh. And, it, and they just had to close just a few months after opening. So I'm glad we got down there and got I to have, experience it. I, I, I think in the future they're probably going to try again now that they, they know their lessons. They were nice the people, too. They were super they were, nice. Uh, yeah. And, and their beer got a really good rating, so they probably make some really good stuff. Uh, so right now, if you go down the Galveston, if, if you go down the Galveston, um, you can go to Devil in the Deep, you can go to Beerfoot, and you can go to Galveston Island. Right. Now, you, if you go down during Labor Day, Labor Day, you can also go to the Galveston Brewmasters Beer Fest. Mm. And just last year, last year they celebrated their tenth anniversary. When is this uh, like, fest? Labor Day. Labor Day. Labor Day okay. weekend. Labor Day it's, weekend. It's usually like Friday, Saturday. Okay. So it's I can never go because right. I, I work the Tuesday yeah. through Saturday schedule. Yeah, but this one is actually has been ranked as high as number three in the list of best beer festivals in the country. Um, so it's cool now now that Galveston's, you know, they had this resurgence. They have this beer fest. People can sample all the beers. Houston is really has a really big beer scene. Yes, it and, is. Yeah. Um, so Galveston's just like, if you need to get away from Houston for a little bit, Come take here, a little weekend vacation. Yeah. Go to the breweries, go to the beach. It's all really nice. Go to the pier, the strand, yeah, right. all the museums, all the, all the ships. It offers so, so much. Yeah. And when you go down there. Go look at the oleander flowers, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, take a picture and yeah. send it to us so we know <laughs> what the heck they are. Uh, but go down there, sit on the beach, enjoy a beer, mm -hmm. and let us know if you like it. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.